This video focuses on the behaviour characteristic of speed of response. Up to now, we're going to assume that students are happy to make inferences on output behaviour based solely on the transfer function, as the system input is typically a step or another simple signal, and we discussed that briefly in the second video. The dynamics of the output are shared with the system transfer function, and the main dynamics are those that come from the transfer function. The focus of this video is to consider what information is embedded within this transfer function with regard to speed of response. We're going to assume that step inputs are the default because that's the most common and if you've got other signals then the shapes that you end up with are slightly more complex and therefore the discussions will also be more complex. First then, what do I mean by fast? Is the response fast enough? Now it's not enough in general that the poles are stable. Obviously we need them to be stable or the behaviour is not convergent. But we need to ask ourselves, what do we mean by fast? So we've got three examples here. This tiny little car down here. And what we've suggested is if that car made it to 60 miles an hour in 30 seconds, we'd probably consider that quite fast, quite impressive. Probably wouldn't even make it to 60 but let's not dwell on that. What about this car over here? Well, for this car, we'd probably say that should be able to make it to 60 miles an hour in about four seconds. So we've got a very different definition of fast. For one, it was 30 seconds. For another, it's four seconds. And then in the middle, we've got this large aircraft. What would you define as fast behavior for an aircraft like this? And what, do we, what are we trying to do here? What we're saying is it's context specific. So if you use the word fast, just be a bit careful because you're not quite sure what you mean. What we really need to be able to do is quantify things in seconds and then leave the discussion about whether it's fast or slow to someone else. So the speed of response relates to the transfer function g and that's what we want to find out. We want to find out in numbers, numerically, what is the speed of response for a given transfer function? And once we can do that, we can say, because we've got a link, what pole positions do we need if we want a particular speed of response? So you come to me and you say, I want it to respond in 10 seconds. I can say, you need pole positions here. And that's because I've put things in numbers rather than this sort of more qualitative term of fast and slow. We've already shown in the very first video that the speed of response improves as poles move further into the left half plane. And we're going to take it for granted that we haven't got any right half plane poles, otherwise we're wasting our time because the response is divergent anyway. We're going to use simple poles to derive our insights because once you've got the insights for simple poles, you can often move these across to more complex scenarios. Here's the example we're going to use then. You'll notice we've taken g to be a very simple example. 1 over s plus 0.4, or I can write that in a sort of time constant form, 1 over s plus 1 over t. Now we've shown the um, free response here and shown how fast the system responds. And you'll notice that it takes roughly 4t seconds to settle. Right, where that t is this number here. So t equals 1 over a if you've got a something of the form 1 over s plus a. And so the time it takes for the system to respond is roughly 4t seconds, where t is 1 over a, and you've written your denominator um, factor as s plus a. So here, because a was 0.4, there you can see it, we get t equals 2.5, and therefore it settles in approximately 10 seconds. Some questions then, just to make sure we've got this. What are the corresponding poles if you want settling times given here? Now, two minutes means 100 and 20 seconds. And what we've said is that, that has got to be equivalent to 4t. 
and therefore that implies that t is approximately 30 and therefore we must have s plus a is approximately s plus 1 over 30. So your pole has got to be minus 1 over 30, or roughly, because remember these, these answers are always approximate when you're talking about real systems. What about 0 0.01 seconds? Well, this again has to be equivalent to 4t, and that implies that capital T is approximately 0 0.0025, and that implies that A has got to be 1 over 0 0.0025. And I think I'm doing this off the top of my head. That must be about 400. You can correct it later if I've got that wrong. So a very different pole position. And you'll notice here a clear observation, which we gave you before, that if the pole is quite close to the imaginary axis, so here we've got a pole at minus 1 over 30, two minutes, maybe that's slow depending on what you're talking about, pole here at minus 400, and what do you get? You get a very fast time constant. Now, I'm going to bring in a slightly different um, issue before I do these last two examples. And you notice I've put it here. The units of S do not have to be seconds. The default is seconds, if that's what you want to do. But you could use different units where it's convenient. So here I've got two hours. If I put that into seconds, that would be an awfully big number. Very, very messy to deal with. So what I can do is I can use units of hours. And that's what I'm going to do. And therefore, I'm going to say if that's equivalent to 4t, then that could give me t is approximately 0 0.5, and I'll put it here, hours. And therefore, a equals 2. Much nicer numbers to deal with than if I express those hours in seconds. So do be aware, depending on the system that you're dealing with, use units that are appropriate. Make your life easy. Now, with 15 seconds, it's perhaps less clear cut. I might leave that in seconds. Um, if that equals 4t, then you could get t. Now, I'm going to be a bit naughty here. I'm going to say this means t is about 4. Now, you could say, oh, no, 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 that's not right. It should be 3.75. But again, remember, we're talking about real systems here. Small decimal places really make no difference at all, and it's a bit pointless. So rather than using all those decimal places, I'm saying, look, I want a time constant of about 4. What's the difference between saying about 4 and 3.75? It's pretty much the same. And therefore, I'm going to get A equals 0 0.25. Main question then. I give you a system like this, and what I want to know is, does this system settle within 5 seconds? And you remember, what we're saying is the settling time is approximately 4t where t is the time constant. Well, for this case, we've got s plus 2 is equivalent to s plus 1 over 0 0.5. And we've got s plus 4 is equivalent to s plus 1 over 0 0.25. So this implies t equals a half, 4t equals 2. This one implies t equals 0.25, 4t equals 1. So we've got two different modes in this system. Mode 1 has got a time constant of a half. Mode 2 has got a time constant of a quarter. So both of those modes are very fast and certainly much faster than 5 seconds. And so this system will settle within 5 seconds. And there's the summary. Both time constants are smaller than 1, and so the system settles well under 5 seconds. What about this system here? Well, I'll use the same analysis. S plus 0.2 is equivalent to S plus 1 over 5, and S plus 0.1 is equivalent to S plus 1 over 10. So this implies T 
equals 5 and this one implies t equals 10. So we've got one mode with a time constant of 5, so that mode will settle in about 20 seconds. We have another mode with a time constant of 10, so that will settle in about 40 seconds. So a clear summary here is both time constants are much slower than 5, so the system is going to settle much slower than 5 seconds. Now a slightly more challenging one. What do you do if you get something like this? And you can see s plus 2 is going to be equivalent to s plus 1 over 0.5, which gives you a time constant of 0.5, and therefore 40 is approximately 2. Or, okay, so we expect that particular mode to settle in about 2 seconds. That's under 5, we're saying, yeah, good so far. But what about this one, the s plus 0.1? is going to give you s plus 1 over 10. So that implies that t is approximately 10, or 4t is approximately 40. So you have a problem here. You've got one mode that settles fast, and one mode that settles slow. And in truth, you really cannot answer the question above without doing some exact algebra. I would have to write g equals a over s plus 2 plus b over s plus 0.1 and work out the answer exactly. If b was very small compared to a, I could ignore the slow mode. But if b is not small, I can't ignore the slow mode and the system won't settle within 5 seconds. But the only way I would know that would be by calculating a and b explicitly. And of course that requires doing some partial fractions and lots of number crunching, so you cannot determine it just by looking at g and looking at the pole positions. So here's the summary. If poles differ significantly, you cannot give a simple answer. So in general, no one's going to expect one. So in summary, the speed of response can sometimes, and we emphasize that, sometimes be estimated from transfer function poles. The time constant is the inverse of the pole. Let's not worry about the minus signs and things. And the settling time is about three to four times the time constant for the corresponding mode. However, if the poles differ significantly in time constants, you'd have to use a partial fraction expansion and find the residue sizes, and that the settling time cannot be estimated reliably. So if you've got significantly different poles in terms of their time constants, you really cannot estimate the settling time because it depends upon which mode is dominant, if any. But the most important thing is the pole positions do give us precise information about the modes in the behaviour. So you know how fast each mode will converge the speed of each mode.